day three of the big van build. I should say it in a bit of a Geordie accent, shouldn't I? So it's like big brother. That didn't even sound remotely Geordie. Day three in the big van build. That's as near as you can get in. I tried to get a quiet moment with the traffic. Not as you can see, lots of traffic, busy road where my dad lives. I've got a lot of the silent coat on, although it's a bit damp and chilly today. It's the wettest day so far. Um, I've just struggled to put the gazebo up uh, and that will hopefully keep me dry during the process. But today I'm going to start to cut the battens for the floor and then I will put the insulation down on the floor and cover it up with the old plywood floor that was in before because there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I was going to replace the front part because it had lots of holes in it but actually I'm going to leave it because it will let me know where the bolts are underneath the insulation so I don't start drilling through it to try and um, put like drain holes or gas dropouts. So I thought actually it'd be wise that I leave that there so I know not to try and put a hole cutter through a bolt because that's not going to work. Um, I've got my silver tape somewhere down here. I got my silver tape stuff which was from I think B and Q and I'm going to stick that over my little screw holes where I've painted them up to make sure that they won't go rusty and I've put silicon sealer in so I'm just going to put little squares of this over the holes just to make doubly sure they're not going to leak through and get moisture into my insulation. So that's today. Let's get started. So what I'm doing is cutting little squares of this foil tape. It's got a self-adhesive backing and then cut it into little squares although it does take a little while to piggle it off so here's one I prepared earlier and then I'm just sticking it so here's one of the holes that I've already filled with silicon sealer I've already painted round it and then I'm putting that over the top just to make doubly sure and there's another one here I've already piggled so I'm going to put that on there What I'm doing here is sticking some sticks like shit to the floor. And put a piece of wood on, line it up with that piece. And then that corner just get out of line scratch that corner remember where the raised up bits are for screwing it in and screw it in too far. Give it a check. There we go. Jobs are good. Un. What I've done so far, after filling all the holes in the floor and doing all that, making it good, I have built this frame using the 25mm thick wood, which is the same thickness as my insulation board. Yeah, I've made the framework like this and I am sticking it down with sticks like shit and 
by um, screwing it down with the hand drill and oh, I say hand electric drill and these really good um, self drilling screws which were suggested on Greg Virgo's channel really good they're from B&Q and it tells you what size screwdriver bit to use as well so that's good and they countersink themselves which is pretty amazing so you don't need to drill a pilot hole anything like that you literally just stick the drill into the screw and go and it's done so I'm doing this when this is done I will start and cut the insulation to fit in each of the individual holes I've been to b and Q, I've been to Tool Station, and now I've been to Aldi. Bought loads of things, which I will show you in a little while. But blimey, busy, busy, busy. I'm back from b and Q, and I well b and Q and Tool Station and Aldi. I bought loads of bits and bobs. Uh, first of all, I bought some more of this silver tape stuff, which I got from Tool Station and. It's not as wide, but it's cheaper than the B&Q one. I bought this real roll of 50 metres of 25mm uh, cable conduit, which was £23 or something like that. But I wanted it to put all my electrical pipes and stuff through. Electrical pipes? Electrical cables. So, because uh, I've not really fully decided what I'm doing there but if I can feed these into the walls before I put the insulation and stuff like that in then it's going to make things a whole lot easier. Um, might also put one through for the fuel line for my diesel heater so that is good and for 10 meters it was eight quid with all these little fittings but I didn't need all the fittings and I thought, well, I probably need 20 metres, but that's 16 quid, and I've still got all these fittings, but I thought I may as well just get 50 metres, and if there's anything left, I can always stick it on eBay or Facebook Marketplace or something like that. Uh, next, I bought four packs of this loft insulation stuff made from recycled plastic. The main reason I got this and not rock wool is because of it being made of plastic. It doesn't absorb moisture uh, and you don't want your insulation holding moisture. So I've got four packs of this. It might be too much, but I'll save the receipt and I can always take it back if I've got any left. Um, I also bought, where is it? some of the silver wrap stuff. I've got one that's 1200 wide by six and a half meters is it I think? Seven and a half meters and there's one that's 600 wide which has fallen down but so I've got that to start doing my vapor seal, vapor barrier over the top of when I put the insulation in and Whilst I was in B&Q, they managed to upsell me, as they always do, because I bought a, can you see it, fire extinguisher kit set. Because I was looking at a fire blanket and I was looking at a fire extinguisher and I think it added up to £29 for both of them. And I saw this kit and I think... I think it was £26 for the kit, which was the same fire blanket, the same uh, fire extinguisher, and also you got a free first aid kit. So that's good. I've got this, and that will go in place, hopefully, somewhere near my kitchen, which should be around here somewhere, but we'll see.